All right, what's up, everybody? This is Stevie Mac. Welcome to All Soccer All Day. Here with my boy, as always, Eric D. Out in Los Angeles. What's up, man? Yo, yo. yo. Not much, not much. Okay, so we have some things to talk about today. But before we do that, we want to... Uh, give a shout out to Vaporgate, our sponsor. Uh, please check them out, vaporgate.com, V A P E R G A T E.com. Order all of your vape supplies from them, please. They, I mean, they're the highest quality anyway, so you don't really want to get it from anywhere else. Uh, so, again, shout out to Vaporgate, our sponsor. You guys are super awesome. Um, second of all, if you want to support this show, which hopefully you do, uh, please leave us a five-star review wherever you are listening to this. Uh, and I'm sure you are listening from any of the places you can. So Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, whatever, all that stuff. We're everywhere. Um, <clears throat> And then also, if you want to support us directly, you can also go to uh, patreon.com slash allsoccerallday. And of course, we really appreciate anything that you're willing to put towards this. It allows us to continue doing this. And uh, hopefully you want to hook us up a little bit. Um, other than that, we are going to get into... We have, we have a lot to cover. We have transfers to talk about. We're in the middle of transfer season. We have the Women's World Cup to go over, the Gold Cup to go over, Copa America, the African Cup of Nations, which is currently going on. And of course, we're going to go over the standings for the MLS currently and kind of some of the more important games that are coming up. So, Eric D., first of all, you got anything you want to put in here before we start going through uh, our transfer talks first? You like, you like my uh, background? <laughs> I like those um, clouds. Blanket right here. Uh, it's actually, it, oh, yeah. By the way, I just want to say that uh, you can uh, check us out on YouTube, too, if you want to see our ugly mugs. You can check that out, and you can see Eric D's uh, cloud blanket that he's talking about right now. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a work in progress, this, uh, this studio space I'm working on. Hopefully, I'll upgrade it next time. But uh, for right now, we're working with what we got, so... Mm-hmm. I'm ready to rock and roll, man, because we've got a lot to unpack. Uh, yeah, man, I'm ready to get stuck in. Okay, um, and just before we go into our transfer news, I have one more thing I want to show you, my friend. All right. What is that? I, don't, I don't think you're ready for the heat here. Are you ready? All right, here we go. There it is. Yeah. There it is. You know that has been... I got these 2019 Nemesis 19.3s, laceless, Adidas. Um, I'm excited to try these out. You know, the laceless ones, um, I'm not sure. Gotta so you haven't them. tried them? You haven't tried them? Yet. No, I haven't got a chance. You know what? Um, like three weeks ago, someone uh, someone kicked me, of course, in the foot. It's part, you know, it, it that, goes with the territory. That happens in soccer ball. Well. Um, and uh but it was a really weird spot they hit me right on the in like the inside of my left foot um okay. which was kind of weird it wasn't like the top it was the inside of my left foot so um <clears throat> it hurt pretty badly for a while i felt like it healed up pretty good then i went out and i played again on monday this last monday and dude tuesday and wednesday it was just blown up like just poof like just no good so i think i might have like a little bit of a stress fracture or something like that in there and so today it feels better and i was supposed to play tomorrow but i'm gonna do myself a solid and take tomorrow off and hopefully get back out there next week you got kicked pretty hard my man dude i i and you know what's crazy is obviously like during the game i thought it was nothing like my boy um yeah, felipe my boy Felipe, who I went and I watched the Copa America final with, um, he's the one that kicked me. And during the game, he hit me and he was like, oh, dude, you all right? And I was like, oh, dude, I'm fine. You know, whatever. It happens. And it wasn't even that bad of a stinger. But apparently, it was worse than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is what it is. So no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go ahead and let's get into our transfers. Man, uh, those are... Uh, those cleats you just showed me the boots those are like the bacon the bacon wrap cleats yeah yeah, yeah 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 
look like bacon. I think they look pretty cool, man. And of course, <laughs> I, I like bacon. I don't know about you, but bacon's bacon. pretty delicious. Sure is. But I'm pretty excited to try them out. Um, I'm probably going to wear some ankle support, though, because, you know, when you get old, <laughs> your ankles yeah. get weak and all that. So <clears throat> anyway, OK, here we go. Transfers. Let's go over some of the less exciting ones first, even though these are pretty cool things going on in the world of club football. Uh, the first one we'll just mention is Adrian Rabio finally has left PSG and gone to Juve. So hopefully you find some something new there. He can get out on the, the midfield with them. You know, I think he's a good player. Things just weren't working out in PSG. So new yeah. club. You know, new beginnings. We'll see what happens. I agree. Um, speaking of Juve or uh, PSG, while we're on there, uh, Ander Herrera moving from Manchester United over to PSG. So it seems like PSG is kind of reworking their midfield a little bit. Um, I think Herrera is a pretty decent player. We'll see how he fits in over there at PSG. Um, let's see. Going down the list here, that the interesting ones first, or hey, I mean, less interesting. Go ahead. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but this picture is awesome on our group chat. It is pretty awesome. Post. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I'm, you captured that, but that's. I don't really think that was me. I think that was. Uh, I think that was probably uh, Rubio. That's dope. Yeah, uh, that's pretty. I can do it. I can do it. There it is. There, there it you is. are. It's woo -woo. Yeah. Pro that club. is. That's Stevie Max soccer right there, lifting the cup. Yeah, Virtually FIFA 19 on Xbox. If you want to check it out, I sometimes I uh, broadcast over on Twitch too, so that's kind Ooh, of fun. Oh, little side promotion. Yeah, and man, check it out. out. Um, okay, let's stick with uh, Juve for a second, and let's talk about the fact. I think this is a pretty cool thing. Uh, Gigi Buffon has been si signed by Juve for a one-year contract. He's going back there. He's getting to play with Ronaldo. Obviously, I think the idea is retiring with them, uh, going out on top, hopefully. Um, I mean, Juve is always the favorite right now in Italy to to win. So To, to be honest with you, like, I don't know about Cristiano Ronaldo, but I'm pulling for Juve to win Champions League because I'd like to see Gigi win. Champions yeah, I mean, Gigi's an icon. He is yeah. absolutely one of the greatest of all time. And so to see him go out truly on top would be pretty cool. Oh, dude, your clouds fell. <laughs> oh, what happened? Well, the show must go on, guys. The show must go on. Okay, so going over a couple more um, transfers here. Let's see. Mm, okay, let's talk about Madrid because a lot's going on with Madrid right now. Uh, obviously, Zinedine Zidane has taken the helm yet again, and as expected, he's rebuilding, retooling, getting the players he wants, and uh, let's talk about some of those people. Uh, first of all, the first major sh uh, signing sorry, was Luka Jovi uh, Jovic, and he came over from Frankfurt, I believe, in Germany. I watched some highlights of this guy and he's a pretty awesome finisher, finisher big guy. Um, you know, he, they're looking basically like the next Korean Benzema, I'm pretty sure, um, which is pretty dope. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see how he fits in and if he really takes the reins uh, as the number nine. Uh, number two, uh, Eder Militao. This is a Brazilian defender. He came from Porto. And uh, a lot of people wanted this guy last year. He is a young, up-and-coming center back. And so it looks like they're trying to prepare for the inevitable departure of Sergio Ramos and some of the older guys in the back line. And so they're trying to think ahead a little bit, I believe. Um, we have Mateo Kovacic, who... Ended the loan with Chelsea. He was on loan with Chelsea. Ended the loan on June 30th. And then immediately on July 1st, got the loan back. So he basically went back to Madrid and then went back to Chelsea. So uh, he's on Chelsea again on loan, 45 mil. Uh, so Kovacic there. Um, 
Ames Rodriguez, his loan ended uh, to Bayern Munich. So he's technically on the squad right now at Madrid. That'll be interesting to see if he ends up staying or if they end up loaning him out again or if they end up doing a full transfer and seeing if he goes somewhere uh, that he wants to fit into. I mean, he had so much joy over in Madrid, though, as he was coming up. I'm sure he probably wants to play under Zinedine Zidane. I mean, uh, who who wouldn't, frankly? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we got to talk about the major transfer. Major. Eden Hazard moving over from Chelsea to Madrid. This was something that's been talked about over the course of the last couple of years. We called it last year. No. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, I think a lot of people were talking about it, but but here he is, man. And it, I, I'm... I'm excited to see what he does in the uh, the Spanish league and with Madrid. Uh, he he's an incredible player. Uh, he was tearing it up last season with Chelsea. He was, yeah, I mean, he was just doing some of the dirtiest he's, stuff. He's not going to have a problem whatsoever acclimating to La Liga. I mean, you know, we've talked about this before: La Liga and Premier League one and two. So I don't really think he's going to have any issues there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't believe uh, he's going to have any problems either. Um, but that should be, you know, definitely something to keep an eye on. I, um, I, I guess I would say, I was just interject here, the one thing I'd say, he's at a much bigger club now. I mean, being at Real Madrid, the pressure is a lot greater than being at Chelsea. Yeah, and, and, we, and as we've talked about many times before uh, on this show, uh, Madrid – Galacticos, man, you got to perform or they'll just drop you. They don't care, bro. Yeah. They, they, they want the top squads. They want the best players. And if you're not there, then you're not there. Well, yeah, look at James Rodriguez. He was shipped out. I mean, I know he's coming back. You know, Bale's on the bench sometimes. Like, yeah. No, most of the time, man. Hey, Zandine Zidane threw him under the bus on one of their last games. Uh, he literally w- said, I would not have put Gareth Bale on the pitch no matter what was going on in his last game, which was like, pfft. I can't even imagine where Gareth Bale, he, he must just be hating life right now over there. It'll be interesting well, to see where he ends up. But. He's probably over there counting his money. So, I mean, obviously, there's always the dough. But at the same time, you, I think we all know that Gareth Bale wants to get on the pitch. I mean, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, all right, let's talk about a couple of other transfers. Atletico Madrid signing Joao Felix, the young superstar from Portugal. Uh, you know, I saw an interview with him the other day, and I really like how he said this. Obviously, you know, any player coming out of Portugal automatically will be compared to Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, and he's a young player, but he said, Hey, you know what? I don't want to be Ronaldo. I want to be myself. And that's legit. Well, know? that's a smart thing to say. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, there's really in reality, there's really nothing else to say. You know, if he would have come out and been like, Oh yeah, I can't, you know, hopefully I can. Yeah. I'm trying to be the next to Ronaldo. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can't do that. I mean, uh, but I mean, dude, if you haven't seen any of his, the stuff that he's doing on, you know, these little clips and training and stuff, oh, my God, his touch on the ball is just disgusting, man. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what he does in Atleti. And speaking of Atletico Madrid, there's all of these rumors going around about Antoine Griezmann. Griezmann how, um, I say Griezmann. Yes, possibly being transferred over to Barcelona. A lot of people were talking about uh, that happening today. Today would be Friday if you're listening to this. Um, But as Eric D and I always say, until they're holding up that kit, it ain't real. So we'll see where he goes, where he ends up. But he's a big name. He's uh, up and coming, well-skilled. He would obviously add another element to the already stacked, ridiculous Barcelona team. And speaking of a stacked, ridiculous Barcelona player uh, who joined as well, ah, De Jong, man, this kid, Mm -hmm. uh, coming over from Ajax, he clearly proved himself. He has continued to prove himself. He's wearing that Barcelona kit. 
and uh, this kid's going to be something big. I, I don't see him failing. Um, and him linking up with Messi, uh, oh, my God. It's going to be pretty nasty. So Barca, as always, stacked squad. I mean, nothing really else to say about it, man, unless you got something you want to throw in there. No, I mean, it's Barcelona. It's Real Madrid. It's They just reload, man. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, last thing I want to touch on as far as transfers before we get into some of these competitions going on. Um, dude, what's going on with Neymar? I I feel like Neymar's having a uh, a midlife crisis. <laughs> I would agree with you. Um, uh, you know, when I was at the uh, the Brazilian bar watching the Copa America final. Uh, there was definitely some shade being thrown down on Neymar, man. Even just amongst the chatter at the bar. I mean, the homies were just like, yeah, see, we're in the final. We don't need Neymar. Whatever. We got this dude. We got this. We got Coutinho. We got David Neres, bro. David Neres. To clarify, this was Brazilian. These Brazilians just throwing Neymar under the huge-ass yellow bus, bro. (laughs) So, uh, I mean... now, on top of that, club football-wise, uh, but, you know, everyone knows about this. Stripped of his captaincy in the Brazilian team, uh, that was a big hit. Then he gets injured, and that's one of the biggest things, I think, that's the knock on Neymar, man. He's always getting injured. Uh, he's an incredible talent as far as pure skill. I mean, the guy's incredible, but he's getting hurt. And, I mean, you want to talk about a diva, bro. It's like... He's like pushing it harder and harder. PSG, he's not showing up. He just didn't show up to their first practice. And the very next day, there was a video of him playing uh, Fuchi Volley. Fuchi Volley. In Brazil. Like oh, he just ooh. was like. So he, he just doubled down on it. He was like, I'm not going to show up, and then I'm going to show the world that I'm in Brazil. Yeah. And he was just like, whatever. Big. Nowhere near Paris. Nowhere near. Some serious shade, bro. So obviously he wants out of Paris. Paris obviously wants him out. Uh, and, and of course, the other talk is back to Barcelona. Are they going to have that? Well, I, that's it. Yeah, exactly. What's interesting about that is he left Barcelona to get out of Messi's shadow. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to be second fiddle to Messi or third fiddle to Suarez or whatever. You know, like... So for him to go back to Barcelona, wouldn't that be him basically him admitting like, hey, I should have never left? Totally. But the thing is, is like what is big, go? like what big club would take him first of all after all of this sh- stuff that he's pulling off right now? Man City with, with Pep. <laughs> no, I'm serious. What would you, yeah, you I'm, hey man, I don't know, man. Man United, no. Can you imagine if he came to the Premier League? He would be destroyed. Play? He'd be injured every week. Dude, it, he would oh, just get annihilated, bro. Defenders would be licking the chops. Now, that being said, let, let's knock it back to the UEFA Champions League where they were playing against Liverpool. And, he, I mean, he tore him up down that sideline. His speed was a killer. And yeah, uh, he was a no big one, factor. No one's denying his talent. I think yeah. what it is is we're talking about his temperament. Um, For sure. No, well, his temperament and, frankly, his frailty, you know? Well, yes. I mean, it's – that's the thing. Even if he was to become – his temperament was to become better, if his frailty is something that now you're starting to worry because he's on the – what is he, in the late 20s now? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd have to look that up. I'd exactly, look up his but... age. But, I mean, it's like, yeah, now you're starting to worry about injuries. Mm-hmm. Prone and, and all that. And that's something you definitely have to consider when you're – giving this guy that kind of money yep that he that he wants um i feel like we're both looking it up i have 27 yeah Yeah, okay so so So, moving moving you know he's on the late half well that's the thing as a footballer you're a soccer player whatever you want to say um once you hit 30 you yeah. know, and you're after 30, now you're already kind of starting to be over the hill. Pretty much unless you're Messi or unless you're Ronaldo. I mean, there's plenty. I mean, a lot of Italian players, they used to play until sure. their late 30s, almost 40s. I mean, players can do it. 
But James James Milner. <laughs> James Milner, exactly. Just like just like plugging along the. But in general terms, once you've hit thirty, you're you're you need to be pretty old in soccer terms. Yeah, I mean that's definitely true. And on top of that, I keep on coming back to it. But he has the history of injury already. So, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? And speaking of not being under the shadow, okay, so you got Ronaldo over in Juve, not going there. You got Messi in Barcelona. So if you go back there, you're basically just jumping back in. And also, if he does end up going back to Barcelona, what's happening with Coutinho? Uh, and it doesn't, it already doesn't seem like Coutinho is going to end up staying there. That's all the buzz. But nothing's happened yet. So, you know, that's just rumor. Um, you know, if he comes over to the epl i mean how how's he gonna fit into any of the big teams in the epl i I mean i just don't see it what happens if he goes to china or or dude mls oh god dude you're throwing it out there you're throwing it out there there. but the thing is you know what i mean obviously he'd be the biggest dp signing ever in the history of the mls but i don't even think the mls could pay him no. Nah. Anywhere where he'd want. So. I mean, what? Maybe David Beckham. Yeah, but David Beckham, his contract was over like a five-year period, and it was over. No, was... no, no. What I'm talking about is Beckham paying. Oh, Beckham paying, like him playing at Inter Miami. Yeah. yeah. But this is okay. This is like the most far-fetched <laughs> conversation <laughs> right now. <laughs> but hey, man, you know what? Uh-huh. One can dream. One can dream, right? Yeah. Um. Okay, very cool. Uh, as far as transfers go, I don't really have anything else right now. You got anything else you want to throw in? No, man. Let's get into this because we got a lot to unpack here. So we okay. Into All right, here we go. We're going to go in order of uh, some of the biggest events that have just come to an end or are coming to an end shortly. Yeah, take, it, take a deep breath. Because before you know it, Premier League, I think I... I saw the other day Premier League is like less than a month away. First week of August, bro. Uh, it's it's insanity, man. But this is this is why we love this game. That's right. It, it just doesn't stop, man. It does not. Um, it stop. Can't stop. So here it goes. We are the champions. We are champions. Yeah. The USA, the Women's World Cup. They close it down. They finish it off. That's four stars, baby. If you are not in tune with that, shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. Yeah. I mean, you got you got it. I can't even stress enough that the skill in women's football is world class, man. World class. If you don't believe me, go on Instagram and just look up some women's World Cup highlights. I sent that I sent that over to you the other day. All yeah, those nutmegs, bro. People the, people's souls being taken. Losing their souls, yeah. Oh That's my true. god. That's and and you know what? I gotta I gotta throw this out there, okay? My newest and biggest crush of all time. Not Alex Morgan. I already know. Rose Lavelle, dude. Rose Lavelle. Yeah. That's my girl. Dude, she is so <laughs> nasty. She just destroys people on the dribble. She she opened up the midfield for them like in every game. She scores the the clinching goal in the World Cup final with an absolutely amazing dribble and great finish. No one was stopping that. And if you haven't seen it, I've told you this before and it's totally true. When they were playing against England in the semifinal game, she was down on the end line. And dude, she <laughs> megged that girl so bad. She left that girl in the PP stance. Her <laughs> knees were knocked dude, together. You saw it. <laughs> oh, it was disgusting. Just, just go check it out. Go check it out, man. If you don't believe me, look at these highlights. Um, the FIFA Women's World Cup was absolutely one of the most entertaining and exciting events that you could possibly see. Yeah. And a hey, big ups to the women from the United States, bringing it home, showing that we are the best in the world. You said PP stance. Um, it's true, man. Her knees were inside. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me play the counter to that. I mean, first, what I'd like to say is any dude or even woman for that matter that is knocking these women playing soccer 
I wish you, if you did play soccer, you could play against these women and see how much skill that they have and how they could probably school you. Most likely that's what would happen. Um, so, yeah, you definitely have to put some respect on their name. Um, so the counter to all that would be what? where does the women's game go from here? Because it's it's did really well in the World Cup. Mm-hmm. I think it's doing really well in – in Europe, it seems like. With the United States just won their fourth, four stars now, but the U.S. game here is struggling. You know? Yeah, I mean, Absolute absolutely. Game. It's it's so such a weird thing. It is because because soccer in the United States is big, but it's not big. It's very strange. It's like very popular like in a the secret highest... club it's so weird man like every kid pretty much plays it at some point high school is a thing yeah. you know we we could get into all the pay for play nonsense and why we don't have a uh, promotion relegation yeah. and we, we could do all that i mean honestly that should be its own show yeah but but here's the thing women's club soccer is not nearly as big as any other men's professional league not even close and it's just i i feel like part of it is time it hasn't been around very long part of it is frankly um ignorance yeah ignorance man Mm -hmm. ignorance people think that these ladies don't have the skill they think Mm -hmm. that they're slow they think that I don't know, man. I don't know what they think. But again, if they would actually open their mind up and watch these ladies play for real, I mean, dude, I was I was saying the other day, I hope my kid can play like Rose Lavelle someday. Yeah. Like, I hope my son can do that, man. Exactly. Like that totally. is that's where it is. These these people are world class. These ladies have it all together, man. But that's what you know, that's what I love about this game is that really Yes, granted, you take the best female team against the best male team. Yeah, the male team's going to win. I get it. It's part of, you know, it's biology. But what I like about this game is that women and men, it's more equal than in other sports. When men and women compete or compete together or play together, it's more equal, I believe, in soccer than it is in any other sport. And that's an awesome thing. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, you know, I was actually, interestingly enough, having this conversation with a stranger last night at my local pub. And, um, you know, he, he was had no idea about anything. But the topic came up of the Women's World Cup and what was going down because out here in Chicago uh, at Lincoln Park, the uh, U.S. soccer out here threw up a huge screen uh, there was thousands of people that came out. They mm-hmm. posted up, and uh, yeah, you could check us out on Instagram. I saw that, uh, and nice. and I took some videos of when we scored both of our goals, our penalty from Megan Rapino, and also um, our uh, Rose Lavelle goal. So that stuff's up on the Instagram. Uh, Instagram tag is all soccer all day underscore USA. I'm pretty sure I should probably know that since it is our <laughs> yes. Instagram. You, yeah, you're right. All yeah, soccer so. all day underscore USA. Mm-hmm. So check that out. Um, there's some cool highlights of that. But anyways, um, what I was saying was uh, it, this is something that. It, <sighs> Just people don't, you know, I'm having this conversation with this guy and what comes out is the fact that if we're all being, and this is a touchy subject and that's what I was talking about last night. I was like, I don't know how much we should be talking about this because my bartender was a female. I'm sitting next to a regular that's a female there and it's a weird topic to bring up because like, you know, obviously, um, the pay gap and everything that we're talking about, you know, Megan Rapino and uh, all the ladies are pushing for, and so many people are supporting. I, I'm not, you know, I'm going to reserve all things. I'm not even going to say anything about that. But what I will say is that people just are ignorant and don't know about the skill of the women's game. 
um, you know, all they think right away is that, that, I mean, they're sexist, like you said, man. They automatically just think that, ah, men are clearly better. So why would I ever watch the women play? And that's it. That's as far as they go. There's there's no open-minded thought. Yeah, and that's what's what's crazy about it because it's like, you know, if you ever had, you know, obviously your mother, you know, you came from a woman, your sister, an aunt, a daughter, you know, whoever it may be, a friend, you know, you're basically disparaging all women that they can't, they can't hang, they can't do what the the men are doing, and I don't, yeah, we're not here arguing about the female product being better than the male product. We're not saying that. But what we're saying is the female product, there is a lot to desire. There is a lot that they're bringing to the table. They're yep. in, they're in, okay, uh, to name drop real quick, um, Mike McGee, former mm-hmm. G of the Galaxy, yep. he said in on Twitter, I believe it was, or an IG, I forgot what it was, he said like he's been trying to get his daughter to play soccer. Uh-huh. And but he's not been trying to push her, you know, kind of sure. like how I kind of feel about my daughters as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but he couldn't do it. Like she's not interested. Mm-hmm. And now he he showed a video where like his daughter was outside playing, kicking the ball, and that was because of the U.S. women's team. Oh, absolutely, man. Not because her dad loves soccer and he was a professional. None of that. It, it's because what she saw, like, hey, women. Girls like me are out there playing. I want to do that too. It was inspirational. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, and that's that's the power, man. That's the power yeah. of football. Uh, you know, female, male, it doesn't matter. You know, and all the young girls out there, they need to get out there. They need to watch the ladies who are setting the example. And pff, totally awesome, man. Totally awesome. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, it's yes, the women's game and the problems that it has it's not going to go away overnight i mean honestly the men's game has its own issues here in the states we're talking Mm -hmm. about the united states um so yeah it's but you know i i don't think like we should be trying to get on the bandwagon to support and help them out instead of bringing them down you know which i think some guys uh, well even women probably too are trying to do and it's like yeah it's just whack to see I mean, hey, man, Megan Rapino said this in her speech, man. We all got to hate less and love more, dude. And that's legit. Where's to death. live by? Where's to live by? Death. Okay, so let's move on. Um, our next competition uh, that went down and finished up recently that we're going to mention, the Copa America. This is a South American uh, Nations Cup, basically. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. They do invite... A few teams from around the world. We had Qatar and Japan in this tournament. And, you know, what it comes down to is if Brazil didn't win this tournament, uh, there would have been rioting in the streets. <laughs> it would have been it would have been mayhem, bro. Well, uh, did you see Messi's comments? Uh, you know what? I missed him. What? Oh, he was, he's basically saying uh, nothing short of corruption. Yeah. Well, saw the tournament. Whatever, man. You know, people are going to say what they say. But here's the thing. is like, you know, although Messi, of course, is in the conversation for greatest of all time, this is yet another marker of failure with the national team. Um, yeah. You know, it, not only failure, but losing to Brazil in the semifinal. That's a real stinger, man. Yeah, I mean, I've talked about this before. There's an obvious difference between how Messi is with Argentina and how he is with uh, uh, Barcelona. It's just there's his night and day. And it's it shows in the way Argentina plays, and it shows in the way, obviously, he plays with Barcelona. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's like... I don't know what the comparison would be for him. But uh, here you go. I got one for you. It's like he has divorced parents. And when he's over at mom's house, <laughs> it's the best time. He's having fun. Everything's <laughs> great. And then he goes over to dad's house. 
and uh, it's just not right, you know. I like this analogy. I, I mean, it's just Argentina when he's playing with them. There's just no. I just don't there's, see any. I don't see any joy. I don't see any I, joy, I, and I also don't see any sort of chemistry amongst that team. Yeah. It's a bunch of individual players doing what they do. They have great talent on their team, and so they pull off victories out of pure talent. Yeah. But, dude, they're not a they're not a team. You yeah, know it's, I mean? it's it's a talent, not a team. I mean, that's what it is. It's just, Eleven so, years out there with a bunch of talent, and they're not you know not playing as a team. And in the end, it's very hard to to win a championship of any level when you're not a team. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's I would say pretty much impossible. I don't, I don't, I can't think of a team that, uh, I mean, even back in the day with Maradona, with Pele, you look at these guys and if you look at how they played, yeah, they were some of the greatest of all time, but also the chemistry on the team was on point. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I, I was wa- watching a documentary, shout out to this documentary called Becoming Champions. Mm-hmm. That's on Netflix. Uh, there's a guy in there when he's talking about Brazil, and he's talking about how how it is today with these superstars and how it was back then. It was like, yeah, we had great players like Pele, but Pele had great players around him as well. Killer it wasn't players. Just about man. Pele. So I mean, there was a great supporting cast around these superstars, and obviously, you know, things were were different back then than of they course. are now. So, um, but yeah, it's messy. Just it just goes to prove Messi alone doesn't mean you're just going to win everything there is of course. on the table for Auburn. Yep, absolutely. And um, so anyways, uh, you know, Brazil winning this tournament. I mean, honestly, the, the final was pretty exciting, man. Um, I mean, Peru made it a game. It wasn't like Peru was yes, just I, I was I was worried about that considering that they had lost 5-0 to Brazil earlier in the tournament. Yep. Uh, so it was, was a better, I. better final uh, than I expected. So that yeah. was good. I mean, Brazil scores, Peru answers, and at that point in time, in the first half, man, you know, I'm watching in the, in the Brazilian bar, dude. It got quiet. It got quiet real quick when Brazil scored. <laughs> and um, you know, of course, the opposite happened as soon as Firmino scores that, uh, that second goal. I mean, the place went nuts. And actually, if you go on our Instagram, I got a video of that, too. And yes. uh, it's pretty exciting, man. So uh, Brazil puts it away in the end. 3-1, Copa America champions. Haters going to hate. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, they take home the trophy. And this is the first one in a long time. It's got to feel good for Brazil to have that win. And let's not forget, no Neymar. And I mean, it's yet another like hammer dropping on Neymar's coffin, bro. I don't, I don't know where and what this guy is gonna do, no but matter his talent. Isn't it interesting that as we keep dropping all this shade on on Neymar, it's you know you see Cristiano Ronaldo, you see Messi, and you thought Neymar was the next guy to take that step. And become one of those guys, and it just goes to show the difference. Like, yep, you know, well, like I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi have been doing what they've been doing consistently for years now. Well, okay, so I was just gonna say it's also, yeah, I was just gonna say it's it's a matter of professionalism. It's yeah. a matter of not being the diva, dude. Ronaldo, he could oh, yeah. have been a huge. Oh diva. yeah. No, no, yeah, ex- exactly. Cristiano Ronaldo's had plenty of diva moments. There's no Absolutely. doubt about it. But the dude works his ass off, and it shows on the field. He produces. He produces. He, produces. Yeah. he wins, right? Yeah. So, like I said, haters going to hate, man. But we'll see, okay? So, wrapping that up, unless you have anything else to throw no. in? Okay. Moving on. Next competition. And this one's kind of a... It's personal. Little- little sad guy in here. <laughs> so, you know, Sting. <laughs> the Gold Cup goes down. This is the CONCACAF Gold Cup, Central and North America's um, National Cup. And this has had a long history of U.S. and Mexico clashing. And yet again, they meet in the final. It was here in Chicago. It was, I mean, I really wanted to go, but I didn't end up making it. Um, yeah, man, you didn't. But, man, 
hindsight's 2020, but I, I truly honestly feel like the U.S. should have won. We, we had, I feel like we had more chances. I feel that overall in the game, we controlled the game a little bit more on, you know, possession wise and also moving the ball. But what it comes down to, and you and I talked about this, Mexico took their chance. Mexico finished. It was a dope goal, by the way. I mean, look back at that highlight, man. That back heel um, from Raul Jimenez, sick. And the finish from Jonah Dos Santos, man, killer. It, it, was, a, it was a strange game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the goal was dope, no doubt. Um, this is the first time I can remember in recent memory. I know everybody has... You know, people are throwing shade at Michael Bradley and Altador and Greg Berhalter. Mm-hmm. Um, the beginning of that game, the U.S. was taking it to Mexico. Dude, for real. We were not. We weren't sitting back, absorbing pressure, waiting to counter. Oh. We were like, we were actually, you know, going toe to toe with Mexico. Granted, Mexico's it wasn't their full strength squad. Not not. They had a World Cup match today. The squad that was out there wouldn't be the squad that they'd have. True. We, we, we get that. Same thing with the U.S., but the U.S. was probably closer maybe to fuller strength than Mexico was. Um, but, yeah, like you said, we had – when Pulisic went around and he hit, was in on Ochoa, that was one chance, and then Altador's chance – I don't well even want to talk by. about that. I don't even want to uh, talk about Altador shanking that dude. That's going to make so, me sad. I'm going to shed some tears, bro. Uh, okay. So so th- those opportunities, as I told you, that is the difference in these games. At the highest level, in a Classico, because that's what this is, a Derby. The game, the game is won and lost right there. Yep. Like, you know. Oh, dude, Mex- oh, can I just throw this out there? Yeah, go ahead. How about the header at the end and the save off the line from Guardado? That Guardado, is exactly. It, it, it is dope. And there, it's interesting because this game was played with a lot of adrenaline, a lot of intensity, as you would expect it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, the ref, man, he he let it be, man. He, he let I it go. I don't think he, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think he showed a card. Um, uh, let me take a look at that. But I, I, I'm, uh, I'm trying to pull it up right now as I'm talking to you. But I think, um, yeah, no cards, bro. No, no cards. Yeah. So he he really, I mean, what one person would argue like, yo, hey, look, he just he let them play. He let mm-hmm. it be where because I mean, you could say the U.S. had some some challenges there early on that probably should have warranted some yellow cards. I know someone had said maybe uh, Josie should have saw red on Jonah's tackle. Um, but it's interesting, like, you had the whole incident with uh, Josie later on with, I think, maybe it was Marino. I forgot who kind of, like, just fell on him. Like, yeah, that, knees yeah. was back. Yep, and we're talking about Guardado putting his Guardado hands on... Guardado putting the, hands on uh, Weston McKinney. Weston McKinney's throat. Yep. I mean, a lot of this stuff is textbook red cards, and the ref was just like... No. Okay. So, so yes. (laughs) So, I mean, like, you know, as you were saying, in a lot of ways, though, it's kind of dope because it's just like, dude, this is Mexico, USA. You don't see that. I will say this. Even though he didn't make calls that probably textbook should have been called, at least he was consistent. Like, he just, (laughs) he just, and no, you know, I'm serious. I bet you if you talk to the players, they, they would say, that's usually as players, that is your number one thing with the ref. I don't, care, I don't care if this guy calls the best game ever or the worst game ever, just be consistent. Well, he was consistent because he just didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he didn't give cards for either side and he was just like letting them be, and so that's that's all good. Like if it had been lopsided one way or another, then there would have been um full on hate. Full yeah, there'd been on you know, more of a controversy. Um but yeah, man, it, it's it's tough, man, because it's definitely it's our it's our number one rival, mm-hmm. and um, always will be, always will be, and when you lose those, it, it it stings more than anything other. And 
I'll tell you, honestly, a month ago, I was worried that the U.S. maybe wouldn't make it this far, or if they got to the final against Mexico, they would have gotten smoked. Mm-hmm. And that didn't happen. I'm no. not trying to look for a moral victory here, but a 1-0, considering what happened, you take the emotion out of it, hey, that's that's why Mexico's Mexico. And where yeah. we're at, you know, what we're doing, it's like, yo, man, that's that little bit of quality, that little bit more quality and that gets you to the top there. Okay, I, I, before we move on from this, I have to throw this out there. <sighs> I was so pissed off about the substitutions from Greg <laughs> Berhalter. Now, listen, I get Giassi Zardes coming in for Altador. That one I get. But, bro, Christian rolled on. <laughs> coming in for Jordan Morris. Uh, uh, where's Tyler Boyd? Yeah, that should have been Tyler Boyd. And then, and then, uh, dude, Lovitz? We're, we're down by one, and you bring in Lovitz? <laughs> yeah. Uh, wh- what's happening? I don't know. You know, there must be some stuff behind the scenes. Obviously, we're not there. But, uh, dude, I was losing it when the these substitutions came on. Uh, yeah, I think in the Tyler Boyd situation, like, I don't know if it was like maybe he got too big of a head, you know, too soon. I, I don't know if they're trying to cool him down or burn holes. Like, that's why I kind of feel like like something maybe behind is just like, you know, look, uh, yeah, you're going to get your chances, but. Right now, I'm going to throw someone else out there. Um, it would Christian have been rolled nice. on. Christian rolled on. Let's remind it. Dude, I'm, gonna, it I'm just nice throwing some have. shade on that, not only because Christian rolled on, I don't think is as good a player, but also because he plays for Seattle. Okay? I'm not cool with that. Okay. I hate Seattle. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, if... I'm just kidding, all you Seattle fans. Not kidding. Look, Josh Sargent should have been on this. This squad. That was and, a that was a big talk. Lots of yeah. talk about that. And he should have been the guy coming in for Altador. Um, yeah, I, I think it should have been Tyler Boyd uh, in for Rodon. Uh, that's what I was thinking too. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going on there, but I that's what I would do. And then yeah, the last uh, Levitz um, coming in that was a little baffling. Uh, all I could think of is he was trying to bolster the defense press some guys up and you know hope to protect on you know as press, push push. press christian rolled on up <laughs> yes well that that move had already been made so i know i know that um, move, yeah it's i'm sipping on the hater aid a lot right now by the way it, it's interesting because when i see burholter i think he he looks like a, su- a substitute teacher and, uh, <laughs> you get that vibe like he, he looks he looks like the guy. That... Uh, that's pretty funny. Um, look, considering what we came from, from Klinsman to now. Oh yeah. Um, you know it, it's tough because Verholter was going up against uh, a good Mexican side and going up against Tata Martino. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he's just he's not as experienced a coach, mm-hmm. manager as some of the greats obviously and um you got to give them time i yeah i would agree with that i i before you go on i just want to say that although we're kind of throwing some shade right now i have hope for greg berhalter and there is there are a lot of good things probably more good things than bad things that came out of this gold cup for the u.s yeah yeah so i mean it's gonna be interesting i mean the, the problem that the U.S. has in Mexico and CONCACAF in general is CONCACAF. Like, mm-hmm. CONCACAF is just, to me, a hot mess. And mm-hmm. um, I, I forget the U.S. Like, just talking about Mexico, Mexico is never going to win a World Cup the way CONCACAF is constructed right now. Like... I really think CONCACAF and Commonwealth probably should unite confederations so that these two continents can play against each other more often and really, like, sharp, you know, steel, sharp, and steel kind of a deal. Because, like, right now, like, if you're Mexico, you've been, you were dominating the region for, like, 
generations. Mm-hmm. Who knows how many decades? And now, just now, some of the minnows are coming up. Like the United States, we're taking soccer seriously now. Costa Rica is much better than they ever been. But like, really, it's still Mexico's party, and everybody's yep. just invited. And it doesn't really help Mexico. No, um, not at all. You know, that's why when they're at the World Cup, it you know they might do good in the group stage or just get out. But it's really hard to progress in the World Cup when, for four years, you're used to playing Honduras and and you know Jamaica and you know whatever it, it, it may be. You know, not not trying to throw too much shade at those national teams, but they're not. You know, they're not France. No, for sure. You know, I, they're not Brazil. It's like absolutely and. I completely agree with you, but this is the state of CONCACAF right now. Uh, we'll see how it progresses. It is right. what it is. I mean, right. you know, you can only play who's in front of you. But that's where I think, like, the money is in Europe. The biggest clubs are in Europe. Mm-hmm. That's why Europe dominates yep. football. And then once in a while, South America can get in because they're yep. arguably the second, uh, you know, biggest region after the And so that leads us into... One of the other regions that's going on right now, the African Cup of Nations. And, uh, you know, there is a lot to be said about the teams in Africa and the quality of these uh, squads. A lot of big name players come out of Africa. Um, Unfortunately, and uh, this again comes down to the almighty dollar, um, Africa, just in general, does not have the riches of Europe. They do not have the resources. And so Senegal, great talent. Nigeria, great talent. Egypt, we have some stuff going on there. Mo Salah, ooh, represent right now. Mo Salah, I'm wearing that, there you go. Wearing that kit. But, I mean, there's incredible players that come out of Africa, but it's more individuals, and it's not... It's not Europe. It's not South America. It, yeah, and... there's there's a reason why no other country outside of South America or Europe has ever won the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And that's the cash. It is the cash. So yeah. right now in the semifinal, this is going down uh, Sunday. Uh, we have the two semifinal matches, Senegal and Tunisia, and also Algeria and Nigeria going down. Uh, you know, Senegal and Nigeria have long been the powerhouses of soccer in Africa. And so it looks like these two are going to meet again in this final. The final is on Friday, the 19th. Uh, and if you want to catch that, I'm pretty sure it's on BN Sports. Hey, man, I'll, I'll catch any football game going down, especially if Sadio Mane is out there, bro. Whoop, whoop. That's our boy. Um, so uh, bringing us around, we're going to just wrap this up with the standings of Major League Soccer currently. Yeah, talk about that for a second. Let me turn on this light. You yeah, you got it. Anymore. So um, going over these standings right now, you know, we're about halfway through the season. Uh, in the East, Philadelphia Union are at top right now, 36 points ahead of DC United. Um, Atlanta FC has finally started showing themselves a little bit. Uh, Atlanta coming in third place with 30 points. So they're six points behind the first, uh, first place team and they have, t- uh, two games in hand actually too. So they could technically, if they get two wins, they could be even Atlanta back up top. Now, don't get me wrong, they don't look anything like they did last year right now. Um, but they are kind of in a weird rebuilding, strange phase here. You know, it's it's the first they're, year with a new coach. Yeah, they're in the Frank DeVore, yep. know, trying to figure out what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, long story short over there, uh, Philadelphia seems to be the most consistent right now. But, dude, we always talk about this. The MLS right now uh, is – it's – it goes in streaks, you know, just yeah. because right now Toronto's down in seventh place, that doesn't mean they're not going to end up in third, second place by the time this is over. And Atlanta, they've come up a long way. Remember at the beginning of the season, Atlanta was way down at the bottom. Now they're in third place. So uh, again, there's about a half a season left. So, I mean, anything can happen over there. So Eastern Conference right now, um, you know, we do have the New York Derby coming up. So that's always fun. NYCFC taking on the New York Red Bulls. 
Um, so that should be a good matchup. Uh, the more exciting stuff, in my opinion, is over in the Western Conference right now. Uh, as we've been talking about for some time now, LAFC at the top of the Western Conference, at the top of the, you know, they're, they're ahead in the a supporter shield right now, 43 points. Uh, it really does seem right now uh, that they are continuing and basically the only real consistent team that we can see right now. Um, right behind them, I shouldn't say right behind them, nine points behind them is our beloved LA Galaxy. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the Galaxy because I'll probably lose it, but... Hey man, we're in, we're in second place, and you know what? El Trafico is coming up. That's what this show's for, man. That, that, that's your feelings. Uh, yeah. Some therapy, serious therapy. <laughs> um, hey, one week from today, El Trafico. Yes, it's yes. Gonna be I'm, like, it's what the kids say is gonna be lit. Yeah. Um, but look, tomorrow. Okay, but look, tomorrow, bro, C- Cali Classico. Mm-hmm. Or today. Let's not let's today. not forget. Uh, let's not forget tonight. Uh, it's gonna happen, and um, dude, I whether you want to admit it or not, the earthquakes have turned a page. Oh, they have. So I, 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 hey, look. As much as I don't like the quakes, it's not like I can't be objective and say they have turned it around. Um, and you know what? Big ups to Wando. Okay? I, I want to know. I, uh, who at MLS headquarters scheduled arguably <laughs> these two biggest rivals in the league back to back weeks? I, I mean, at, I least we're, at least we're home, right? I mean, we're home tomorrow. Yeah. Are we home for El Tráfico next week too? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, Excuse me. <coughs> so, oh, yeah. I mean. Well, and let's you know what? Let's throw this out there. Let's keep in mind that we just lost the first. Um, Mm-hmm. Classico uh, against the Earthquakes just recently too. I mean, they we played them two games ago. It's like, it's weird scheduling, man. Oh, oh, and then we have we have Tijuana after that in the the, the newly minted Leagues Cup. Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, man. These next you know few weeks here, actually, I think yeah, this is interesting. So tomorrow we play, and then we play a week from tomorrow in El Trafico. And then the Tuesday after that Friday, we play Tijuana in the League's Cup. It's like, come on, man. We just played two Classicos in a row. And then we're going to play some club from Mexico for the whole, like, uh, I don't know. The scheduling's awful, but... Well, yeah. let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's <laughs> see if Jonah Dos Santos and Uriel Antuna can bring some of their swag back to the galaxy. And man. it doesn't. It doesn't get better, man. After that, the week after, the, well, that Saturday, they play the Portland Timbers in Portland, and the week after that, they go to Atlanta. Mm. Anyway. Mm 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 mm. Well, up. Yeah, G's up for sure. Look tonight, Cali Classico. Tune in next week, El Trafico. Don't miss that. Even if you're not a Galaxy fan, even if you're not an LAFC fan, it doesn't matter. It's going to be very, very entertaining. I feel like it's going to be high octane. And you know what, man? Love him or hate him, Zlatan shows up for these games, bro. Can we get the the ref from Guatemala? I think he's from Guatemala. The ref for the Mexico U.S. game to do the (laughs) El Trafico. <laughs> no cards, guys. Just go do what you do. Boom! <laughs> Street fight. Dude, it's gonna be gnarly, man. Oh, it's yeah. gonna be gnarly. And um, hey, I just want to say this too. Uh, this is something that uh, you and I have both touched on. Uh, Zlatan, over the course of pretty much every game except the last one, has had some shade thrown on him for overreacting, for being too emotional, for calling out his own players on the pitch. Um, you know, a lot of people have criticized him for that, and honestly, for good reason, man. Like, and he immediately, once this was actually said and a thing, he has right away turned that back. He's kind of dialed it back a little bit, at least with the showing of emotion. I'm sure he still's got it going on. Um, and 
there it is what it is. But hey, man, if the guy can score goals uh, and he can lift that team, then we might have something going on. Look, man, I want to see Efrain Alvarez start tomorrow night. Or Dude, that'd be, that'd be killer. Yeah. Um, I love the kid, man. Yeah, he he, he definitely made some mistakes, gave the ball away a little bit on the last game. But dude, how about that cross? And pff, give me a break on the finish from Zlatan, though. That header was ridiculous. Going against Re- the green? Ridiculous. The far post, far side netting. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> silly, silly. Anyway, okay, so I think that's gonna wrap it us for uh, up for us tonight. Um, Hey, Eric D, you got anything else you want to throw in on this? Uh, uh, I guess my... Oh, I don't have it anymore. It just It was kind of my transfers. Kind of going back around to it. Did you see the guy that got transferred to Liverpool? I, uh, I may have missed that. Where did it go? I was going to ask you who this guy was. I had never heard of him. Hmm. Well, I'm maybe Austin. we can pick that up next time. No worries. Oh, uh, so Inter, Inter confirmed Man U's meeting with uh, Lukaku. Okay. So you got you got that. Something to keep an eye on for the next one. I don't have this kid's name anymore. Yeah, L- Liverpool just got a player, but I never heard of the guy. So I was just going to have a little tease and see if you knew who he was, but I can't find him right now. No but worries. Yeah, man. Um, so, yeah are in the thick of summer so now we're going to focus more on uh, MLS before the Premier League starts up again. Yep. Um, right around the corner. Right around the corner. Yeah. It's uh, hey man, it, it don't stop. Yep. Alright guys. Uh, as always enjoy the games and don't hate. Don't hate.